Hello again and welcome to another War and Forge Game Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Matthew Youngman for sending in some awesome pictures of his Imperial Guard forces. Really, really like the cool, crisp colour scheme that you've got going on here. The classic sort of olive green with black stripes in the vehicles looks really, really good. Thanks for this picture to Matthew, you've certainly done the Guard proud. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they want me to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page or you can send them to me via email. And don't worry, there'll be a link to the Facebook page down in the description below and there'll also be the email address down there. But without further ado, let's crack on with today's video. Now today's video is going to be continuing this week's theme which is all about Scions. I'm in an absolutely mad Scion mood at the moment, crazy for the old glory boys. I'm taken to a tournament this weekend and in fact, tournament organizer has been very organized which helps. Uh, and I know who my first round is going to be, it's actually going to go to be against a Necron list which has got blocks of warriors, a Silent King and a Void Dragon. So all of the toys being brought out. Uh, but we're not here to discuss that particular venture. If you're interested in knowing a little bit more about what I'm going to be facing uh, in my first round of the event, then you know, let me know uh, down in the comment section below. But what we're going to be talking about today, guys, is how you can season, how you can salt, how you can add a little bit of pizzazz to your guard list with some lovely Scion seasoning. That's what we're going to be talking about. So in more serious terms, we're going to be doing a little bit of an analysis as how, as a guard player, you can add in a force of scions to your army. Like, a, not have them be the whole army, but you're running your standard guard list, you're looking at some tank commands, some manticles, you've got a decent amount of infantry, and you, you know, you've been hearing good things about scions, and you want to dip your toe in. Well, we're going to be discussing today uh, the best ways of running an allied patrol of scions. That's the scale we're looking at. We're not looking at running a whole extra like battalion of scions. We're looking at adding a little bit of seasoning, a little patrol of scions uh, and the number of routes and ways and the best ways uh, that you can do that. So without further ado, let's crack on with that now uh, and we'll sort of we'll just dive straight into this. So the first thing I want to talk about is the detachment size that we're considering in this scenario. And we are looking at a patrol and the reason we're doing that is one, it is less CP intensive and two it means you it's in a funny sort of way it's more flexible you would think that because of the patrol being smaller and you're not being able to take as many units that that would lead to inflexibility but when you're looking to just add uh, an extra element not a whole main dish but just an extra element to your list a patrol is a really effective way of doing that because at the end of the day if you just want to take an HQ and a troop choice which is actually really good for scions and just adding a bit of seasoning, patrol does that perfectly and it's only two additional CP, uh, which isn't too bad when you think about it because you'll start the game and you'll gain a CP straight away. So it's a efficient way of adding those scions in and gives you that uh, low level flexibility where you're not having to take huge amounts of tax. Now, Simply, simple way of taking your scions is, you, like I said, you just take that HQ, you just take... Uh, bare bones squad of scions, um, maybe two bare bones of squads of scions, and you just use them for a very particular specialist role uh, for claiming some secondaries. And that's the key thing when you're adding these patrols in. You want to give them a specialized role. When you're not running a full scion army, when you're taking just a patrol, a bit of seasoning, as we've said, uh, it's often best to give them a specific task often you can take all comer patrols and we'll definitely be taking a look at that but i generally advise when you're adding in a more specialist attachment like this try and have a tactic in mind and the first tactic that you can run with this is simply you could be taking those couple of bare bone scion squads with a with an hq and you're looking at something like engagement fronts you're looking at something like Retrieve Octarius Data. And the job of these scions, especially if you're looking at Retrieve Octarius Data, or ROD for short, uh, is turn two, you drop down one of these small footprint units, and that unit will um, uh, will retrieve the Octarius Data in a table quarter, and then turn three, you do the same thing. And that's a really, really efficient use of the scions. Because, um, bear in mind, you would need two 
bare bones cause assigned to do this because you're looking at retrieval touch data, which cannot be done by a character, so just bear that in mind. Uh, but that's really good because what that allows you to do is to max out Rod, and that's 12 victory points. You are securing yourself 12 victory points. You'll, you'll easily get it in your own two deployment squares. You'll be fine in your own table half. That's not a problem. You know, whatever the deployment zone, you'll be, you should be able to get into two of the table quarters that you start off in, basically, and, uh, and, and get Rod that way. But you are looking to, to get an easy way you know, 90 points or plus a, plus the uh, Tempesta Prime, I suppose, you're looking at, what, 130, 135 points and you're paying the points and you're paying the CP and that gets you victory points. And that's an easy way. That's one way of looking at it. Super cheap, fantastic. Don't forget those units dropping in will help you to secure uh, engagement on fronts as well. That Tempesta Prime, he may seem like a bit of a tax, but he's totally not. He can, again, be deployed in as an engagement on fronts unit. So yeah, there's no tax in that whatsoever. It's super efficient. It's got a very specific mission goal in, drop in, do the objective, die. Great, if they live, they're engaging on all fronts for you every turn. Fantastic. They hide in terrain, they're not getting involved in the fight, they can be a harassment unit, they can tie up some sort of artillery unit that's not very good in combat. Really, you know, they've got one job and if they live past their drop, that's an advantage, but really you bring them for the secondary. So that's the first thing you can do. The second thing you can do is you can start looking at using a Scions for their more traditional role. And when I mean traditional, we're talking, you know, addition proof. We're talking, you know, this has been done since Scions were a thing when they were called Stormtroopers and Kazakin. Uh, and that is what we call basically, and this is really what you're going to be looking at. Um, this is the second main way of running them. Uh, you're looking at Suicide Scions, Suicide Stormies. Typically, you're looking at Suicide Melter or Suicide Plasma. And what do I mean by that? It means the unit drops in, has as much firepower in as small a package as possible, and they drop in and they blitz something really hard. They delete something on the enemy side of the board if possible. And then if they die, you don't care because they've come in, they've deleted something, and then they die. Suicide Scions have been a thing forever. Suicide Stormtroopers have been a thing forever. Um, it's not unique to the Guard. Loads of armies can do it. But with 9th edition, with the current points cost of Scions being you know, reasonable and the amount of firepower they're able to bring in a, in a small package, um, there's certainly, uh, you know, there, there, there's never been a better time to consider you drop melt the scions. Never been a better time. And there's a couple of ways you can do this, but actually, the regiment that really lends itself uh, to this particular tactic is the Iotan Gorgons, which is interesting because um, Iotan Gorgons are a, a bit of a regiment that when you're looking at a pure sign army, you kind of overlook. Uh, but when you're thinking of an ally, a little bit of seasoning, a bit of salt and pepper for your guard, um, I heard some Gorgons stand out really fantastically, and it's for one simple reason. They have a really good, unique stratagem, okay? And the name of it, it's very similar to the Valkyrie one, where when you're in a Valkyrie and you get out, you can get out five inches away, except for this one doesn't require a Valkyrie, and it's called Daring Descent. The one in the Valkyrie is called Precision Drop, in case anyone's con you know, concerned about that. But the one that the Iotan Gorgons get, the ninth Iotan Gorgons, Daring Descent. Use this stratagem in your movement phase. Select one ninth Iotan Gorgons unit from your army that was set up in a high altitude transport, basically deep strike. Until the end of that phase, when you set up that unit on the battlefield using the aerial drop ability, deep strike for you long beards out there, that you must be set up more than five inches away from any enemy models instead of more than nine inches away. You cannot charge with that unit this turn. So what you do with this unit is very simple. With this patrol, you're looking at a Tempesta Prime and you're looking at two ways of running this. You know, really, so, you know, there's a couple of ways of running it. One, you're looking at a command squad, a silent command squad. And uh, you are looking at um, a silent command squad, a Tempesta Prime and a unit of uh, regular Scions. And what you want to do is you want to daring to send the Scion Command Squad in and you're going to give that Scion Command Squad four Melter Guns. Okay? Now normally you'd be thinking, oh, Plasma! But no, we're, we're going Melter Guns because of the five inch thing. 
You see, because you can deep strike within five inches because of daring descent, that allows you to get within super melter range. For those of you that don't know what I mean by that, if melters are within half range, so with the case of a standard melter gun, we're talking six inches or less, so daring descent allows you to deploy within five inches, that's that's all good. You get to, your damage on your melter gun goes from D6 to D6 plus two, which means you're doing a minimum of three damage. That's super important. One, it just ups your damage greatly. Two, ups your reliability. But three, it very much plays into the meta. There's a lot of Marines running around with Dreadnoughts, which all have reduced damage by one. Death Guard are one of the top three competitive armies out there at the moment. They reduce damage by one across the board. And there's nothing like dropping in with a big old Melter squad. Well, say a, a command squad with four Melters in it. And just unleashing four melters on the enemy, and everyone that goes through, that's a death that that is a dead death shroud terminator, for example. You know, and the way you would use this particular uh, force is you would either use it to right, there's an enemy vehicle there that must die, drop in four melters, blow it up. You know, you're gonna be looking at things like elimination protocol sanction, you're gonna be looking at things like uh, take aim on those melter guns. And the point is you're gonna drop in, you're gonna blow that vehicle up, or if there's a tough unit in front of you, like unit of Death Shroud, for example, and you're like, you know what, I could, I think I've got some firepower to deal with those Death Shroud, but ooh, my I took a bit of a hammering last turn. I could really just, I need to guarantee that that tough unit dies. Then you just drop these melted gun guys in, and they just, they just secure that guarantee, uh, and they mean that you know those extra four melted guns are going to help you supplement your firepower in a an area of the battlefield where you may have been weakened by a you know, strong enemy turn. Um, now you can, you know, when you're looking at this patrol, you might think, well, aren't those basic scions wasted then? You know, the, are they attacks? Because bear in mind, the command squad, you know, you'd have to take that in addition to the, the regular squad of scions. Well, no, not really. There's two ways you can run into this. The first way is, again, see my previous point, they can do retrieval tariff data if you want them to do that. Or if you really want these guys to be damage dealers, uh, then you want to consider just giving the, the regular sound squad uh, something like a couple of plasma guns. Because whilst they won't be able to benefit from down descent, they will be able to benefit from the fact they can deploy within nine inches, and that's rapid fire range for plasma. And you can give your Tempesta Prime a command rod, it's only five points. And what you're doing is you're dropping in there, and you've got your four melter guns in melter range. You're supplementing that with additional two plasma guns and a plasma pistol on those scions. Uh, and everyone's getting orders because of the Tempesta Prime with the command rod. Again, super efficient, no tax, no wastage. Everyone's got a role to play. It works really, really well. And so you can see these are the two ways of, um, you know, in terms of fundamentally, these are the two ways that you can run your Scion detachments. You can go for the objectives and it doesn't really matter what it doesn't matter what regiment trait you give them you may not even need to spend the cp on the extra patrol if you just fought, if you're taking like a brigade already and you just got a couple of extra troop choices free you can pop a few sounds in there and you've already got that on um, you know choice option number one and option number two is the suicide route now that of course there are other regiment traits you can take um and there are other ways of taking advantage uh, of this damage dealing route uh, another way that pops into my head regarding Odin Gorgons, again, taking advantage of Daring Descent, is you could just take a big 10-man squad of riflemen, just, just riflemen, and you use Daring Descent to get within rapid fire range of your hotshot las guns, and you use your Tempesta Prime. You don't need to upgrade him with anything. Uh, you can just be bare bone, saves you five points. And he can issue one order, and he can issue the order to the Scions with the Rifleman squad, first rank fire, second rank fire. And that will get you 36 hot shot rifle shots. And the great thing is that that helps take advantage of the Aoton Gorgon's regiment trait. Because their actual regiment trait, which is also very useful for the Melter and whatnot, but it's not guaranteed to kick off if you're going down sort of the first route we talked about, or second route, I should say. Uh, but the Aoton Gorgon regiment trait is exploding sixes to hit when shooting the closest enemy unit. So that might pop up with the Melter Squad and the Plasma Squad that we talked about, but it's almost certainly going to pop up with the Rifleman Squad, because you'll find 36 shots. Statistically, you should get an extra six hits from, from your rifle shooting. 
So you're going to get 24 hits um, out of 36 shots. But with the explosives, that's 30 hits you're going to be getting with those with those silence. And that also allows you to take advantage of um, other stratagems. So for example, you could take, uh, you could spend another CP for point blank efficiency. Use a stratagem in your shooting phase when a Militarum Tempest unit from your army is chosen to shoot with until the end of that phase when resolving an attack made with a hot shot las gun, las pistol, or hot shot volley gun by model in that unit against unit within half range, add one to the strength characteristic of that weapon. Now this is really good because hot shot las guns are fantastic. One of their biggest weaknesses is that they're still las guns at the range strength three. And this allows you to get, that stratagem allows you to get past this. You're within half range because of daring descent. And then you're now strength four. So it really, you know, now you're looking at, as we said, 30 strength four hits. And when you're talking about shooting at some of the meta things out there, like uh, Admech, now may bear in mind there's transhuman or, and the equivalent thereof in certain factions. But when you're looking at um, the armies that are out there, yes, this won't help you against Death Guard. But if we're looking at factions which are on the ascendancy, we're talking, or, or have already ascended, we're talking Dark Elder, a lot of Toughness 3 out there. Um, we're talking uh, the new Raiders, uh, Toughness 6, so that Strength 4 allows you to win them on 5s rather than 6s. You know, there's things out there. Uh, then you've got Admech. Now, bear in mind, they do have some form of transhuman, but if you can bait it out somewhere else, then you can drop these guys in and you're wounding them on 3s instead of 4s. Uh, likewise with sisters, again, you'd have to bait the transhuman out, uh, or the equivalent of whatever it's called, the one that means you only with them on 4+, plus. in case anyone's not sure what I'm talking about, there's a stratagem that certain factions have, where if you put it on a unit, you can only with them on a 4+, plus, no matter how strong your gun is. Uh, in this case, you just wouldn't spend the CP on that, but you try and bait it out, and then target them with the strength 4, rapid fire squad, down descent squad, uh, against another unit, and that means you're doing a lot more wounds. Um, and again, you start combining that, with uh, things like killing zone, if you've been able to take, you know, another squad potentially, and you you chip a wound off, and then, you know, you, you we're talking. There's options. The point is, there's options. So that's the um, that's the one way of running it. Uh, another way of um, running your patrol of scions is the take all comers approach, and this is when you you want to take scions and you're just not quite sure how you want to run them, but you just want to have a nice bit of punch in your army. Uh, and the way I would run, and this will cost you a little bit more and could be considered maybe a little bit less efficient, but probably overall will give you just a nice solid firepower punch. You're not sure what you're gonna be taking on, but you know that this way of running a Scions is gonna be useful in every game you go into. It might not be you know, as good as if you oh, really wish I had that melt that one time. But the other 9 out of 10 games, you're just grateful that they turned up. You know, you're grateful that you had this asset to call upon. And this is where you take a patrol of Scions. And I would, for taking for the Take All Common Regiment, I straight away I start looking at Land and Lions. Straight away. All right. Uh, Capic Eagles, again, they're all right, but I, I'm looking at Land and Lions in this case. Uh, and the way I'm looking at this is I'm looking at taking a patrol with a Tempesta Prime in it with a command rod and I'm looking at taking two squads of scions and they've got double plasma gun and a plasma pistol and a sergeant and then either I'm going to take a third one of those units or I'm going to take a command squad depending if you you know command squad is 15 points more expensive so if you need to shave some points off you can just take three bare bone squads but really you're looking at two squads of scions uh, a Tempesta Prime and a Command Squad. And what you equip that Command Squad with is up to you. You can either continue down the Plasma route, so you get four Plasma Guns in your Command Squad, and then you've got two Plasma Guns to the Plasma Pistol in each one of those other two Sound Squads. And what you do is you, you, there's two ways of running this, but you're gonna spend a CP to give that uh, Tempesta Prime uh, Progeny of Conflict, which allows them to take a Warlord trait. Unless, let's just assume you've already spent your Warlord traits and whatnot on taking like two full pair of manticores. If we're talking about a take all comers guard army here, you've already spent those on tank case traits. If you haven't, you can just make the sign on your warlord. But let's assume you're going competitive, you've already considered tank cases, and you're going, you know, down a uh, 
uh, down, you need, you need an extra warlord trait. You spend one CP for Progeny of Conflict, which is a sound strategy which allows you to give a Tempest the primary warlord trait. You're going to take the Land and Lion one, which is key to the armory, which means everyone around him uh, gets to um, a real ones to hit. Uh, you could take the Relic, the Refractor Field, you probably won't need it. These guys are still, we're still talking suicide, we're still talking suicide drops here. Um, which is a take or come a suicide drop. Um, and you either give him the relic, the auto relic with Tiberius, which is on a two plus, he can do another order, so we can shoot three orders, or you just spend the CP uh, for inspired tactics when he drops in. It's up to you how you want to spend that. Uh, I'd probably go for the inspired tactics because I mean, you should have to spend the CP on a relic that you might not, you know, probably don't get, get to use once. Um, so it's, it's funny, but we won't, get, we won't get into details of that. Basically, if you think you're going to survive past turn one, uh, sorry, past your drop turn, take the auto relic because it's one CP and it's going to kick in every turn pretty much. If you think you're going to drop in, kill something, and then die, just go down this bad tactics route. And then use your, C, use your relic for something else. Um, and what you're going to do with this is basically, what you've built here is a Scion commander that can one way or another issue three orders, and he's got three plasma squads just ready to rock and roll and all that plasma is AP minus four which means no matter what you're facing if it's Skatari with a one-up save if it's Death Shroud Terminators if with a, or some form of Terminator Storm Shields here and there they're on a they're on a four-up save and what this does is it drops in and in one turn you get everyone in rapid fire range and in one turn, you're unleashing eight plasma shots from your command squad, plus another eight plasma shots from your two sound squads, plus two plasma shots. So you're unleashing 18 plasma shots, all of which can reroll ones to hit. And you've got enough, just because of the keys to the army warlord trait, and you've got either they're going to be rerolling ones to wound because of bring it down, or if you're targeting a vehicle or monster, you can use the Scion specific order elimination protocol sanction, which everyone forgets about, and you shoot a vehicle or monster, you get full rerolls to wound against that thing. And these guys drop in and they are happy overcharging their plasma and wounding on twos with rerolls ones to hit because they're shooting like infantry uh, with bring it down, or they're happy to take on a big boom boom monster where they're probably be wounding on threes or fours, but they've got full rerolls. And that's your take all comers. That's your, I like this thing that Morning Glory is talking about. I'm not sure how I want to run it. This is how I run it. And you go in and you literally buy three boxes of Tempest Scions or you, you know, you, you, you convert some models, however you want to do it. And that's it. Three boxes, no wasted parts. You're having a great time. Of course, you might have to do some conversions around, you know, special weapons and whatnot, but we won't get into that now. Uh, so that's 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 my that's what you can do. And whether you prefer Melter or Plasma, this this drop really doesn't mind. If you know that your meta is full, full to bursting of reduced damage one armies, then you go you go straight for the Melter. If you know that it's it's a lot of Marines, then you probably want to take Plasma. And if you're not sure, mix it up. You know, take your two Scion squads with uh, all Plasma and take that Command squad with four Melter. That is take all comers. That's a that covers all your bases, and that's that is that last option is probably my recommended way of running your scions of seasoning your army, but you're just not sure how to do it. If you if the one thing you take away from this video, that's the way to do it. And the great thing, and I, I mentioned Kappa Giggles before. If you want to have a unit that can drop in and do some real anti-infantry damage. Look at Kappa Eagles, look at Hotshot Volley Guns. It's cheaper, and it puts out a hell of a lot of firepower. That's your way to fire route. I won't go into details here now, but just that's what you do if you go down the Kappa Eagle route. Um, and that's, that's it. So uh, that's the three ways that I would use allied scions. Capture objectives, delete a specific target, or a take all comer, just I can slot this detachment into any guard force that I'm running and I'm gonna have a great time. I'm gonna have a great time, whether it's mechanized, airborne, infantry, all that jazz, doesn't matter. 
that's a, that's that last attachment is you take all comers addition proof attack attachment and it is pretty much addition proof especially if you build a a nice equal amount of melter and plasma because then you know those weapons no matter the addition have always been useful you always you know always had a use for melt you've always had a use for plasma so there we go hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you think uh let me know how you guys have been running your scion allies how have you been seasoning your army with a little bit of the old salt and pepper the scions and plasma hey that's a good name for it scions of plasma salt and pepper anyway let me know what you guys have been doing really interesting these are the three common ways that i came up with i'm sure there are more ways of doing it uh, and i have hinted at you know a few of the ways you could consider it uh there's of course the Iotan dragons they can all drop into rapid fire range with their lasguns because they get the extra six inches. That's one route. If you really wanted just... Guard doesn't tend to struggle with anti-infantry. But if you're finding that you really need some high AP anti-infantry stuff, you know, we're talking... You know, we're talking... How do we deal with those new Skitari with those... All this transhuman that's going around the place. We well, don't really care about transhuman if you're strength three shooting and toughness three, right? And you just take a patrol of Iota and Dragons, you take a Tempesta Prime in there who can do three orders, you take three ten man bricks, and you drop in and you unleash hundred and eight hotshot lasgun shots. Because those that don't know, Iota and Dragons get six an additional their regiment rate is an additional six inches uh, to rapid fire weapons. Hundred and eight hotshot lasgun shots. That's gonna uh that's going to sting the sisters a bit. That's going to sting the uh, Skitari a bit. I haven't done the maths on it. Uh, but, you know, it's, what, 72 hits? 36 wounds? They're all they're going to be in a 5-up save, probably. 5-up save against 36 wounds? That's nearly a whole 20-man Skitari blob killed. Even if it's a 4-up, they're still... A, yeah, if it's a 20-man sister blob and they're on a 5-up and vulnerable save, or 5-up armor save... We're going to save a third of those. So that's 24 wins. That's a 20 man sister blob gone. Even with transhuman. I think they probably can get four people will save, but if they can't get four if they're stuck on like a five up or something. That's pretty good. If you're looking at a Skitari who may have a one up save, then your minus two will reduce them to a three up. So they're pretty they're still pretty uh pretty happy about that. But if they're on like a a two up save and you can reduce them to like a four up, you're still looking at 18 dead Skitari there. That's the better part of a Skitari blob dealt with. So people are talking about how do we deal with these transhuman 20-man blocks running around. Potentially, Sionis have the answer. Potentially, Sionis have the answer. Certainly something to think about. Uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think uh, about the old Sion allies. Please, uh, you know, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. If you have enjoyed what you've seen today, please consider heading on over to the Patreon page. There's a link down in the description below. Everything I do on this channel, fully funded by the Patreons. I'm super open about it. Uh, all the tournaments, new models, painting, projects, all that kind of stuff. It's funded by the Patreon supporters. Uh, and they're absolutely fantastic. Huge thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are legendary. I don't thank you enough. And I'm going to, you know, I always try to make a bit more of an effort these days. But huge thank you to you guys. Truly, the channel wouldn't be where it was. I wouldn't have been able to go to that tournament last weekend. I wouldn't have been able to go to the tournament this weekend. Uh, it really helps me keep my finger on the pulse. Really, now we're coming out of lockdown, it really helps me bring less of the theory hammer stuff and more of the real world gritty stuff. So massive thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Uh, you guys, you truly have an impact on this channel. Truly. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.